Welcome back family, AVS here and today I have an absolutely beautiful and powerful testimony that has the potential to uplift and inspire you in your faith in Christ. Now this is going to be shown to you in a minute, but briefly what is it about? It is the story of a man who grew up as an extremist Muslim and he communicated with demons. But by the grace of the Most High Yah, he found salvation in Christ and received forgiveness for his sins. Now this testimony is a testament to the transformative power of Christ's love. Very key word there, love and the importance of seeking his mercy and grace in our lives. Now, as followers of the Messiah, we know the historical facts that surround the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. Christ died, his blood was shed, and he rose on the third day. And it's through his sacrifice that we are in fact redeemed. Now, the false prophets that came after the gospel want to corrupt the gospel. That is their goal. It has always been Satan's goal to lie about the gospel because the gospel is salvation. If you don't believe that Christ died for you, his blood was shed and he rose on the third day, you do not have salvation. And this is a key message within this testimony. It is very important that you listen. And even if you have seen this testimony many times, I highly recommend you watching it again because I have personally watched it multiple times. And honestly, it is extremely edifying every time I watch it. And then we are going to head into a Bible study and cover the important issues surrounding this testimony. I love you so much, family. Enjoy. I was born in the southern part of Iran, a city called Abadan born in a Muslim family, Shia Muslim family. My grandfather was a Muslim leader and he had 19 children and uh, out of 19 children he had 84 grandchildren and obviously he had to choose one to carry the spiritual uh, pattern of the life and the teachings for, for, for the next generation. He asked, uh, he, the, he had, uh, obviously there had been some things that, uh, some, some things had happened, some accidents that I should have been killed, but uh, every single time before uh, a danger was coming toward me, I saw the silhouette of a person that, that always was there, and I spoke of it openly to others. And my grandfather took that sign, obviously, that uh, there is the, the spiritual leaders of Islam are of a, uh, looking over this, and this boy and they are protecting him. So he gave me very close attentions and he taught me all the things I knew about Islam. Uh, I joined uh, Hezbollah. Uh, I, I was in that army for about three years. Uh, I was studying Quran extensively then. My grandfather actually I saw this seed in my heart that I should uh, share Islam with the poor misled Christians, you know, uh, that uh, have gone astray and obviously remind and be a spiritual leader to our family outside Iran. I traveled to Malaysia where I was caught with 30 illegal passports, put in prison, and so I started teaching Islam in, in the jail and uh, telling everybody uh, what they must do, what are their duties toward Allah. And so uh, I did this uh, routine uh, every day. I prayed obviously five times a day. Uh, Shiites do pray three times and they include the 17 rak'ah in, in the, uh, three times. But uh, what I did, when it, because I wanted to spend more time with, with God, I did it at five separate times. And then in the end of the evening, I would uh, pray extra prayers. I would have a habit of uh, reading through the Quran cover to cover uh, once every 10 days. And I had gained the spiritual power out of Islam. In Quran, they have the agenda, the, the spiritual beings. And so, uh, speaking to them is not forbidden. In fact, there are stories of talking to them uh, that uh, Prophet Muhammad did. So I had been able to connect to that spiritual realm and uh, been able to acquire powers out of that. 
And so I was able to pray for people, especially when people, uh, someone hurt them or someone did something to them, they would come to me and they would ask me to set a prayer and immediately that person would get sick, have an accident, this kind of things, you know. I was able to close my eyes, uh, tell you what a person is doing in another room. And so this had made me more power hungry. And I wanted to gain more power. So I would spend and meditate more in the Quran. And so as I was doing that one night, I, I just uh, was meditating in the verses. And there are, ver uh, there, there are words in the Quran that are repeated continually, uh, repeatedly, but uh, they have no meanings. They are the secrets of Quran. And so when I was meditating on this, a spirit entered the room and uh, it was much more powerful than I could handle or I could, I could overcome. And so I was filled with fear. And so I tried uh, using all the tools Islam had given me. In the name of Allah, I command you to leave, you know. Uh, Satan, I rebuke you, kind of things. And I used all those and nothing uh, was, was helping. At that moment, I, I was totally desperate and I felt like it is choking me, choking the life out of me. And I felt like I'm dying in that cell. And I just cried out to, uh, to the heavens and I said, God in Farsi, Khoda, help me. And immediately I heard a voice, just as clear as you hear my voice today, saying, bring the name of Jesus. And I, at that moment, I really seriously did not give it one second of thought. I just was, I feel like um, going back, I was drowning. A man that is drowning, you throw a rope. They would never question you about the color of the rope. And just grab on. And so I did. I said, Jesus, if you are true, show me yourself. And to this day, I have no idea of this going back. I'm thinking, why did you word it that way? Why didn't you just say, Jesus, help me? I don't know why. But that's the way it came out. And before I was finished with the sentence, everything was back to normal. Now that was not my conversion. That was the beginning of my confusion. Why would Jesus help a Muslim? Now I had done everything in my power to be a good Muslim. I had already uh, tried to go and uh, commit myself to, uh, in the way of Allah and be a martyr for him, you know, walking on the mines. And so the government of Iran is uh, used to issue the, the people that are uh, fadai or the ones that are willing to, to give themselves, to sacrifice themselves, a special Quran that had the stamp of the government. That, uh, I had participated in the executions by hanging, you know, I had done everything that I thought I must do uh, against the infidels and anything and everything I must do to share Allah with others. Uh, so I, I, I knew that something is wrong and that was not because I doubted Allah or doubted Islam or anything. I fully believed and I didn't know what that is and it just confused me. And so I tried to just forget about it, you know. But that question, why would Jesus help a Muslim? Why would Jesus help a Muslim? That would just keep coming at me. I believe in Muhammad, the last prophet, I would think. The, in the perfect religion, why would Jesus come to help me? And so uh, that uh, two weeks period, I just got really confused and I said, okay, I'm going to pray and fast and ask God himself to show me the path. Obviously, I thought at that moment, and there are verses and, and things taught in the Quran that says uh, the ways of Allah are many, and no matter what part and what part of the mountain you climb, you always come to the same uh, mountain top. And I thought, Maybe that is what, what God is, you know, and then, you no, know, maybe it is different for God. Maybe God has a specific way for me, and He wants me to follow that specific way. So I thought, I will never find out unless I ask this question. So I did. I prayed and fasted, and from the bottom of my heart, with all my strength, I asked, God, what is it that you want me to do? What way is it that you want me to follow? And so for two weeks, 
I sat in one place and I prayed as many hours as I was awake and I fasted as many as hours as I, I was awake and I would just fall asleep literally in that place. I would wake up and I would just pray again and again asking God, what is the way you want me? After two weeks to no avail, I had no answer. And I really got frustrated. I just thought, forget it, you know, what is this? I have no chance of finding out what he wants. I don't even know if God exists. And I have wasted all my life. Uh, I have been afraid all my life, you know, trying to do everything that would please Allah. And now he confuses me. If Allah is all great and he sees the heart, he knew in my heart I love him. And what matters if I call him whatever name I call him, he knows in my heart I love him. And if it does matter to him, I ask him for two weeks. I sat, prayed, and nothing happens. So, you know what? I'm going to go do my own thing. I'm going to go walk my own path. I'm going to do what pleases me. Obviously, at that very moment, I felt the power of God filled the room. Now, in Islam, the greatest sin you can commit, and you can never be forgiven for that, is doubting God himself doubting his teachings, doubting his prophet, and I had done that. And in Islam, they teach you that Allah never visits, God never visits human beings. I feel, and I know against Islam I have committed, the greatest sin that can never be forgiven, God's presence is in the room, and I'm confronted immediately with His Holiness. All this is happening simultaneously. And I'm uh, confronted with His Holiness, which puts this weight of sin upon me. And I know, I know that because He is just, He must kill me. He must wipe me off the face of the earth because I'm so full of sin. And I cried because I literally didn't want to die. But uh, I knew there is no chance. He was so holy and I was so wicked. So I just ran to the corner of the room and I held my head in my arms and I just cried out, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. And I just said, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And as I was crying and just saying, forgive me, I felt a touch on my shoulder saying, I forgive you. And the very instant those words were spoken, I physically felt forgiven. And I couldn't understand it. I said, wait a minute, we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of God who is merciful and gracious. But we don't know if you are forgiven till the day of judgment. That is why there is not one single verse in the Quran that says Muhammad is in the heaven. He must wait like all people for the, the, the day of Qiyamah, the day of resurrection, and all shall be judged on that day. So, how is it that who is this God that says I forgive you and I feel forgiven today? And I asked, I said, who are you? They can forgive me and I feel forgiven today. And says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The moment I heard those words, I knew it's of a great importance, but I had absolutely no idea what that meant. I still had no clue who this God is. So I asked him, what is your name? Jesus Christ, the living God, he answered. And the moment he spoke those words, it was as if every single bone was taken out of my body and I just fell on my face to the ground and I started weeping in the presence of God. I just wept. I still can't eat this. 18 years have gone by, but I still can't forget His love, His mercy. And all the What is for me that day? I can't just forgive you. I felt forgiven. 
I fell on my face. I just wept because for many years I had tried to please God, but that was it. nothing I had done was pleasing to God. Nothing I had done, it wasn't even the bright God that I had known. I felt so deceived because they told me this is God and he wasn't God. They told me killing the way of Allah. But then this God says love in the way of me, forgive in the way of me. And it was everything my heart existed for and said, yes, this is the truth of God. God is about forgiveness. God is about love. So I wept for two hours and I just stood at his feet and he just said, I should look up. And the moment I looked up, I saw this. It was like a TV screen of some sort. I, I just saw people from all different generations and all different na nationalities and backgrounds. And every single person I saw, I could see every single wrong thing they have done. And that overwhelmed me. I just cried, said, God, I live among all these peoples. All of them are sinners. And he says, Afshin, how easy did I forgive you? And I said, very easy. In Farsi, we say, as easy as drinking water. And then just moments after that, I said, no, 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 no. Even easier than drinking water. He says, as easy as I have forgiven you, I can forgive them. Who is going to tell them? I said, send me that. He says, go. That's how I became a Christian. So I prayed, God, send me a Bible. Uh, in jail, somebody from some other section just walked up to me and gave me a book and says, this is what you asked for. And uh, he was in his Indian background and I spoke Urdu and Hindi uh, completely. So, uh, so when he gave it to me, I knew it is the Bible. I forgot to thank you, God. I said, God, I prayed last night and you gave it to me this morning. It is so wonderful. You answer, you are the mighty God that he just spoken of and you provide so quickly. That is the living word of God. I tell you this, I share my testimony so people hear about this almighty God. I don't expect anybody to become a Christian because of my testimony. My testimony is only good for me. I want people to understand this. This is the story of Almighty God that is all able and that is searching for all seeking hearts, that loves all humanity with all his strength and power. If someone hears my testimony today, I really like them to just say, okay, God of heaven, the creator of everything, if this is true, I want that. And I assure you, I can guarantee you that mighty God that came and touched and changed my life and, and, and totally forgive everything I have done. And he made me sure that I can be in heaven with him. He can assure them of the same assurance and he can let them taste of the same forgiveness and same love. And that is who Jesus Christ is. May glory be to Him, today and forevermore. Amen. My suggestion to a Muslim man or a woman is, I know they ask, is Jesus Christ God? Can a human being become God? Of course, never, no human being can become God. But, I believed, even as a Muslim, in an almighty God. God, the great God, that can do anything and everything. But can a God, this great God, become man? 
Can he show himself in the body of a man? Yes, he can. And so, as Christians, we do not say Jesus Christ is the son of a God because God had a child. No, no, no. But God showed himself in the body of Jesus Christ to all humanity. I dare anybody if they ask Jesus Christ with the heart that is right and God knows we cannot test God we cannot question God but we can ask God we can ask God with humble beings that we are saying God Almighty I have a family member that is sick I have someone that is is really really in need of a healing I have question I have a broken heart I, I, I am filled with, with depression and no doctors can help me I have no hope I feel like I am I have no peace if you ask is there hope in Jesus for me is there healing in the name of Jesus for me is there healing for my family member I mean some kind of salvation from that depression ask in the name of Jesus you will receive it because he is the Almighty God you test you will see and that is who God is Hallelujah. Now during the making of this video, a testimony of my own happened, which I would love to share with you because I believe it is extremely edifying and may even clarify a few things for you. So somebody came to me today whilst I was making this video and asked me, how can Yah love me? Now I was extremely led to tell them Yah does love you. Yah does love you. But this is my response to that person. And I am sharing it with you because I believe it is extremely, extremely edifying for the entire body. And even though this answer was given to me for somebody else so that they could understand how the Most High Yah loves them, it also answered me and it is truly, truly beautiful. So this is my response. He loves me too and I found it hard to understand before. But here is what he showed me. Imagine you have a puppy and that puppy is so bad and it pees on the floor, it bites people and is so badly behaved. If someone said, throw that dog in the fire, your heart would be ripped from your chest because the love you have for the dog is unconditional. It isn't dependent on the behavior of the puppy. Now, even though the Most High Yah was ministering to somebody else through me, he was also ministering to me. He is so amazing. He is so loving. His thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. His wisdom and his power is perfection. And we have to follow him, the way, the truth, and the life. Now, why am I giving you this testimony in this video? Well, all glory to the Most High Yah, there is a connection here. Because the man who gave his testimony, who was a Muslim and then came to Christ, he was under a works-based salvational doctrine, which is Satanism. Anybody who believes that on the day of judgment, their good deeds are going to be weighed against their bad deeds and that their salvation, whether they are going to heaven or hell, is dependent on the works that they did, on their own works, then they are already condemned to hell because there is absolutely nothing that you can do to justify yourself as a guilty sinner before a perfect and righteous holy Elohim, holy God, Yahweh. So how do you get to heaven? Well, you must trust in him, the savior, the one who came, the word of Yah who became flesh, the word of God who became flesh, the son of Elohim. He came, he died, his blood was shed, and he rose on the third day. And whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Why? Because he fulfilled the law. He did not break it. He is the giver of the law. He is the perfect judge. He is holy and righteous. And we become the righteousness of Elohim in Christ. There is no way that you yourself can stand before the Most High Yah and actually be found innocent if you are not in Christ. Everybody outside the body of Christ, meaning everybody who has not accepted the true gospel and the true Christ, 
they are condemned by their own works. You see, Satan is a deceiver. He masquerades as an angel of light. He is a deceiver, meaning he lies. What does he want to lie to you about? He wants to lie to you about all topics pertaining to salvation. So in other words, the devil does not care if you believe in things that are true, as long as you do not believe in the truth, the way, and the life. It is a narrow gate that you must enter, and that is Christ. The devil does not care if you believe in God. It says in the scripture that even the demons believe in one God, and they tremble. The devil is a deceiver. He makes you think, oh, because you believe in one God, you're going to heaven? That is a lie. You must believe in salvation. The true savior of the world, Yahweh himself, he sent his word to become flesh. He died for you, his blood was shed, and he rose on the third day, the son of Elohim, who became flesh, the very word of the Most High Yahweh. You understand that when the word became flesh and died, he is allowed, he is worthy to take upon the sins of the world because he himself is a lamb without spot or blemish. Not one bone was broken. The prophecies of the Old Testament all point towards the Messiah coming and taking upon the sin of the world. If you read Isaiah 53, you will witness that this is about the coming of the Messiah, who we know is Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, who has already come now. But the prophecy found in Isaiah 53 is speaking of how he will be suffering for our transgressions. In fact, Rabbis have removed Isaiah 53 from their books. Why? Because they do not want people to understand that this is the Messiah. What sort of person takes away from the word of Yah whilst preaching from the Torah, which states, do not add to or take away from the word? This is hypocrisy. And not only do the rabbis do this, but Islam does it. And Islam does it in an even more deceptive way because they lie to you and tell you the Bible's corrupt, don't believe it. Don't believe this passage, don't believe that passage. We have the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls agrees with the scriptures that we have. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Understand, family, the devil comes as an angel of light. He tells you to do good deeds. He tells you to do all of these things that seem to be works of righteousness but they are unrighteous because they are being done in the rejection of truth. It is like a Satanist donating to charity. The Satanist is still evil and wicked. The Satanist still sacrifices animals behind closed doors. The Satanist still hates within his heart. The Satanist still rejects the gospel of salvation. But does giving to charity now cleanse him of sin? Of course not. If a man goes to court and he has murdered people, can he say to the judge, Oh, but look, he gave to charity, so overlook the fact that he has murdered people and forgive him based on the good deed. Of course not. He will be condemned because of the bad deed. So do not believe Satan's lies. Satan comes to you and tells you, Oh, you will be judged by your works, by your good deeds and your bad deeds, and they will be weighed up on a scale. That is a lie from the pit of hell. The Most High Yahweh will judge on righteousness. He will judge on truth. He will condemn all wicked people. He will condemn all liars, all evildoers to the pit of hell. And only those who are washed in the blood of the lamb shall enter the kingdom of heaven. If somebody is on a motorway and they are speeding and they go to court and they cannot pay their fine, somebody can stand up and pay that fine for them. And the judge can legally say, I will let you go because somebody has stepped in and paid your fine. Well, Christ is worthy to do that on a grand scale for all mankind, for all history, past, present, and future. Why? Because he has eternity within himself, eternal life. He is the giver of eternal life. Therefore, he is worthy to pay the price of eternal condemnation. He can step in and say, I shall die for their sins. Anyone who believes on me shall not perish but have everlasting life. But those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Elohim, Son of God. Understand the gospel of salvation is simple and true. Believe that Christ died for you, his blood was shed and he rose on the third day, that he was risen from the dead. He must have died, otherwise there is no new covenant in his blood and you shall be saved. 
if you reject that he is the son, if you reject that he is the word who became flesh, if you reject that he is the way, the truth and the life, if you reject that he died, his blood was shed and he rose on the third day, if you reject any of those points, you are being led by the Antichrist spirit and I guarantee you that you will not enter the kingdom of heaven guaranteed but it is also true on the positive side if you do believe that he is the word who became flesh if you do believe that he is the son of elohim if you do believe that he died his blood was shed and he rose on the third day and anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life then you shall be saved and you shall enter the kingdom of heaven guaranteed he loves you he wants you to trust in him with all of your heart mind soul and strength to love your neighbor as yourself and love the Most High Yahweh with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The entire Torah and the prophets hang upon these two commandments. Receive the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the Ruach HaKodesh. You will go through a refining fire. People will start leaving your life who you thought were your friends. People who are supposed to be family will probably speak against you because they are no longer in agreement with the darkness that you was once in. You see, light came into the world and darkness does not comprehend it. When you are born again and you are filled with the true light and you are a light of the world, the darkness will not comprehend you. And what darkness does not comprehend, it attacks. But you must maintain a relationship with truth, which is Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Stay in that relationship and walk in the authority that he gave you. He said, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and none at all shall harm you believe the words that he spoke because the words that he spoke are life life live in him abide in him and his word abide in you and you shall bring forth fruit i love you so much family there have been many accusers of the brethren many people falsely accusing me i forgive everyone i say that truthfully right now if you have ever spoken against me i forgive you I forgive you, I forgive you. If you have ever spoken against me, I love you and I pray that you come to Christ and submit to him in fullness and in truth. Do not believe in the false gospels. It says in Galatians 1.8, if anybody preaches a gospel that is contrary to the one that we have given you, the one that we have received, which is that Christ died, his blood was shed and he rose on the third day, read 1 Corinthians 15, then that person is accursed, even if the false gospel is given from an angel in heaven. They are still accursed. Why? Because there is none above the King of Kings. There is none above the Lord of Lords. There is none above the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And when he speaks, it is. There is no contradiction. There is no argument. There is no way that anybody can come against him because he is the truth. And his testimony is true because he is in agreement with the Father. The way, the truth and the life is the only way to the Father believe in him accept him i love you family i pray you have a beautiful day if i've ever done anything to offend you i pray you forgive me i pray that everybody who has heard the sound of my voice if anything that i have ever said has spoken against you i pray you forgive me i love you my intentions are to bring people to christ to point people to christ to make you understand that if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven you must be in a relationship with truth there can be no falsehood you must understand that the simplicity of salvation is that you are saved by grace through faith and not of your works so that nobody can boast. When you love him, you keep his commandments and you will bring forth fruit because of the love. But it does not mean that you are saved by the works that you are doing or the fruits that you are bringing forth. If you are not bringing forth fruit, then you must step back and ask yourself why. Come to Christ, receive him. I love you family. If you enjoy my content, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I love you all so much. Big shout out to all of the channel members, the financial supporters of my content. It goes a very long way. So thank you so, so much. I am very, very grateful. All glory to the most high Yahweh. All of my content is always free, by the way. I want to make this very clear. I do not charge for courses. I do not charge for any of the things that I do here. I give everything away for free. The people who are channel members, they are doing it because they want to support the content. I am not charging for the content. Please understand this. It's very important that you do. The word of Yah is free. I am not selling it. It is free. You are watching this for free. Please understand this. I'm not selling the word of Yah. It is free. You don't have to become a channel member in order to get any extra specific content. And I want to make that very, very clear. The people who don't pay get the exact same content as the people who do pay. I must make this very, very clear. I love you so much, family. If you want to 
Join in with discussions about relevant topics, then head over to the Discord server, discord.gg forward slash AV. Also, family, I want to make this clear. I am very, very overwhelmed with the amount of messages that I get on Telegram in private DMs. So I am going to take a step back from private DMs on Telegram because I desire more time to spend with the Father and grow and receive more wisdom, more understanding, all glory to the Most High Yah. And responding to everybody's private DMs is very, very overwhelming and time consuming at times. I will still respond to people, but I want to make it clear that if my responses take a very long time or if I don't respond, it is because I truly do need more time for my own relationship with the Most High Yah. I dedicate a lot of my time to making content and these videos sometimes take eight, nine hours to make. And the time that I do have, I do want to spend it with the Most High Yah and in nature, in his beautiful creation, looking after my cat, spending time with loved ones. And I don't want anyone to take this as I won't respond to people anymore, but I want to make it clear my position. And I love you very much, family. I pray you have a beautiful day. May the Most High Yah shine his face upon you always and give you peace. Shalom, shalom.